guys, it's Danny. Today I'm taking you along as we are going to repot my one and only Stanahopia orchid. This is the Stanahopia wardi that I have for almost a couple of years now and it is time to repot it. I see there is a lot of algae deposits on the sphagnum moss. The orchid herself has started to reach the edge of the basket. It's kind of not fitting anymore. So it's the perfect time to repot it since I do see root tips growing at the bottom of the basket as well. But we are not going to repot it into a wooden basket anymore. I just found a wire basket with some coconut fiber lining at the flower shop. And I thought this would be great for my super big stanhopia. Well, super big to be. The reason for the change is that quite a few of you along the years who have more experience with stanhopias than me told me that while the wooden basket is okay, Sometimes if you don't see it in time, the flower spike can actually get stuck in between the pieces of wood. I really don't want that to happen if this orchid will ever bloom for me, fingers crossed. I really don't want to miss out the flower spike. I probably don't have experience enough to notice that I have a flower spike there. So I think it would be better to actually go with your advice and transfer this orchid from now on to a wire basket such as this one. Don't worry, we're going to customize this guy as well. So I hope you'll enjoy today's video. If you do, don't forget to give it a like and why not subscribe? I post three times a week. Alrighty, first and foremost, we need to unbasket this orchid, which can be slightly dramatic because roots attach to wood quite a lot. And I'm pretty sure we're gonna have quite a bit of root breakage. So because of this, it is important to perform the repot when the orchid is actively growing new roots, which it does right now. So the transplant shock will not be so, so intense because I already have brand new roots on the way. But yeah, I will warn you now that I do believe we're gonna have quite a bit of root breakage, but good timing helps. Okay, so I actually need to find my tray. All right, here we go. So first, let's remove the hook. All right, so first, let's just try the easy method, pulling the orchid up. Nope, it's not going anywhere. <laughs> then the second most easy method, pushing the orchid out. Ooh, there are quite a few roots, okay. So how I will go about this is I am going to try and gently, as much as possible, detach these roots. Hmm, they're actually detaching. Now, if your finger doesn't really fit, you can definitely get the back end of a spoon or a fork and you can do this. And wouldn't you know it, they actually detach pretty okay. Maybe we're not gonna have a lot of breakage. Okay, so let's see if that helped. I'm actually trying to pull on the older pseudobulbs, not the newer growth. Uh, nope. <laughs> All right. I think I have a different solution. I will try to pry apart the roots from the sides of the basket, which again is pretty easy. Oh, okay, things are starting to become wobbly. Do you see? That is good. There we are. I just needed a bit of leverage. Ta-da! Well, yeah, I do see I lost a new root, but all of the other roots seem to be quite old. I am really happy with this. I was expecting it to be a little bit worse than that, but actually the roots came right off this wooden basket. It really wasn't that bad. So now it looks a bit like a little sandwich. So I'm just going to remove all of this medium, which is not super deteriorated. I'm happy to see that, but you can see this sphagnum moss is full of algae, which to be honest, I'm not sure if it's algae or worse, cyanobacteria, which is not fun to have. It's a little toxic. <laughs> so yeah, I just wanna remove it. And I'm hoping that this will not happen with the other baskets since I have a cocoa fiber liner. So I'm gonna take my time and remove this medium as gently as possible as to save as many roots as possible. You know the drill, I'll come back when I'm done. 
and we're done. I do believe my orchid looks really nice. I have a lot of brand new root tips here. So even if I would have lost the majority of older roots, it would have been okay. So pretty happy with that. But the main reason why I didn't lose way too many roots is because I mainly use sphagnum moss as a medium. And I have to say, I do like the mixture. I managed to get away with watering this orchid every five days and for a hanging basket, that is great. That is very comparable to my other orchids, which are potted. So I will stick to a mixture which is mainly made out of sphagnum moss and some bark at the top. I have that liner, so algae deposits will not be excessive. All right, so I need to clean up a little bit the situation and I'll come back with the potting or basketing, I guess. All right, now, first off, I do wanna customize a little bit this basket. Hmm, some excess cocoa fiber, I can definitely find use for this because these baskets have been made to support soil and soil is very fine. So the liner, in my opinion, is quite thick. I did a little bit of research on Google and apparently people use these baskets with the liners as they are, but I'm a little concerned that it's way too thick. So what I will do is start to remove part of it part of the layer actually, just to make it thinner and easier for the flower spikes to just poke through, find their way out. As you can see, it's a pretty thick layer of cocoa fiber. And after I remove part of it, I think you can see, you can actually see through it. Can you? You're gonna see when I'm done. So I'll go ahead and remove parts of this. All right, look at that. I think you can clearly see, you can see through it right now. The layer is super thin and I really hope that the flower spike will not have issues. I'm guessing I could actually see through it if such a flower spike would like to poke through and maybe it has some issues, I would see the basket get a bulge, right? So I could do something about it. Um, but yeah, this layer is actually coated with a very sticky substance. I read on the internet something about latex coating. I thought latex would be visible. This is absolutely not visible, but definitely it's a little bit sticky. So that's a little worrying, but at the same time, there are quite big spaces. And if the flower spike is thin enough, it can definitely poke through. Like my finger can poke through as well. It just is a little bit too thick. Am I worrying too much? I might be worrying too much. All right, so let's start potting. I will, as I was saying, place quite a lot of sphagnum moss. It will be very, very airy. I'm not gonna compact it. I will mix it a little bit with bark just for some fillers because look at this, it's a, it's a very big basket. So I will mix it with a little bit of bark as well, but still have a nice fluffy mixture here. Even if a flower spike makes its way downwards, it's not enough bark to damage it in any way. I'm also using pretty small grade bark, so look at this. It's so fluffy. Perfect. Where's my orchid? So my orchid has two directions of growth, one here and one here. And the older side is right here. I'm gonna be sure to place this towards the edge of the basket and the newer side towards the center. In this way, I'm gonna gain more time in this basket. So let's continue arranging the medium around the roots. And by the way, the size of the basket absolutely does not matter. Even with pots, if you know very, very, very well how to work with the medium you have and how it interacts with your environment, size does not matter. It matters because it takes up space. The only reason we care about size is because the bigger the pot or container, the more water it can retain. But size is not the only way to limit or to improve water retention. The type of medium used is what I believe the most important. If you are going to fill up a pot with sphagnum moss and moreover, you're gonna compact it so you overfill it in a way with sphagnum moss, yeah, that pot will stay wet forever. But if you make your mixture very, very, very fluffy, or you're using non-water retentive materials such as bark, charcoal, and other things that really don't retain water, 
You can put them in a big bucket and they will not stay wet forever because they don't retain water. Water just runs right through them. Whatever they can retain in between them and in the air pockets, that's however much they will hold. They will not hold water in their structures. Now I'm referring to fresh bark here. Old bark, degraded bark, that's gonna retain water. But at that point, you don't wanna use that bark anymore. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and play with the layers of bark and moss until I reach the top or very close to the top. And I do believe this will be the last layer of sphagnum moss. After this one, I'm gonna top it off with bark. So on this layer, I will add my slow release fertilizer. And being that in hanging baskets, the medium doesn't really stay wet for long periods of time, the sphagnum moss tends to not really degrade all that fast. The medium that I just removed was pretty okay, minus the algae. It could have definitely gone for another year. So if I can keep the circuit here for three years, that's gonna be fine with me. And we're done. Look at that. It actually looks pretty neat. And you know what's funny? This basket is actually lighter than the wooden basket. The wooden basket was actually pretty heavy. So I'm not worried about the weight. And I'm hoping that this setup will last me for two to three years. This orchid is not a slow grower. And this is also not its full size. It will grow pretty large as far as pictures show. So I was a little lucky with the other basket because the orchid was very young when I purchased it. So chances of it blooming kind of slim. But from now on, I think I do have pretty big chances to obtain a flower spike. If I care for it properly, if I continue, it has done beautifully. I love them. If Stanhopias wouldn't be so big and kind of not pretentious, but special when it comes to their setups, the way they produce their flower spikes, I would have more. But, you know, you can imagine, it's not as easy to water something like this. Although, up until now, I have to say, it wasn't such a headache with the other basket. I used this container, which is the dome of a seed tray. I just used it as a place to soak the other basket. It was mainly moss, so it soaked up a lot of water. So that went for about five days. It was okay with me. Again, I have some pots which last me five days. If I can find a big enough container for this one to soak in, I think I can get away with watering it every five days to a week. It is quite a thirsty orchid, I will have to say, but you see it instantly. The pseudobulbs really, really shrivel when it's thirsty. So I'm gonna go with the visual cue. And man, I really, really hope that this liner is thin enough for the flower spikes to make their way through. And here she is. This is where I used to keep her, I will have to say. Now that I watered it, it's a little heavy. It gives me the heebie-jeebies. I will probably hang it somewhere else, not on my curtain rod. I do still have that Ikea hanger. Well, it's made for clothing. I'm gonna use it for her, probably. But anyway, another thing that I did was just make some cuts in the liner, particularly towards the base, just because it felt like it was pretty tough. I just wanna make it a little bit more loose and now I do believe it's very, very loose. So hopefully this will be okay for the flower spikes. Let me know what you guys think. If you have experience with these types of liners, um, if you did what I did, how did it work out for you? I'm curious to know. But for today, that's about it. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. And I hope you've enjoyed this video. I shall keep you up to date, fingers crossed. We're gonna have some blooms soon because I hear they're amazing. Subscribe to my channel for more orchid videos, tutorials, experiments, updates, and other fun orchid subjects. If you wish to support the channel, do consider becoming a member or visit the merch store linked down below in the description. You can also follow me on Instagram and Facebook. It's always nice to stay in touch there as well. And I'll see you next time. Bye.